pressure on receptors. So in this lecture of receptor, this is the beginning. In this slide, I will tell you receptor act as a transducer. It will perceive change one type of the energy into the another one. And the sensory unit is a single afferent nerve. Mind it single, only single afferent nerve fiber with all its branches at the receptor endings known as sensory unit. So afferent nerve dendrites, it is usually the dendrites of a single afferent nerve and branching of the dendrite is known as sensory unit. Receptive field area of the area where it stimulated lead to activity in the affine neuron is called receptive field. Now the overlapping of this receptive field, one is here, another is here and then they overlap. Overlapping of the receptive field done due to the interdigitant with other adjacent similar type of the neuron. So, once there is a stimulus is of threshold level, there is development of the action potential. Before that, there is a development of receptor potential inside the receptors. And after that, action potential is generated. So, the receptor potential in non-neural receptors when occur, it causes change in the mammalian potential and what happened ionic because of the ionic changes channels changes its metamorphosis and influences the neurotransmitter release this is the general rule that the primary sensory neuron picks up information from the receptive field and there is a convergence into the secondary sensory neurons and the size of the receptive field determines the sensitivity of the stimulus. And this is the two-point discrimination test. And this is the rule that the primary neurons ends in the ipsilator same side of the spinal cord. Second neuron always crossed to the opposite side. It may be happen that it may relay into the medulla or it may happen it relay into the it crosses in the medulla or it crosses in the spinal cord itself. Then thalamus and cortex are meant for spe specifically highly discriminative perception of sensation. Third thing, which is not highly discriminative, then the relay station is the reticular formation. And the lateral inhibition sharpens and do accurate localization of the perception. So this point, lateral inhibition is very, very important in everywhere in the nervous system because we, we require very sharp and localized perception. Now, if we say the sensory unit, the smaller the sensory unit, higher will be the overlapping. And better will be the two-point discrimination. So, the two-point discriminations better means that with a minimal distance, we can appreciate the two points are touched or is applied within a uh, is touched simultaneously. So the better resolution, the two-point discrimination is a more sensitive part is the lips, fingertips is a another part. On the back of the skin it is very less precise. Here it is 5 to 6 centimeter distance of the two-point discrimination. So the two-point discrimination threshold 
is the measure of tactile acuity you can say the tactile acuity can be measured by two point discrimination now we will receptors are the modified dendrites of neuron sensory neuron so what are the receptors they are modified dendrites of the afferent neurons they can be classified which is very important can be classified depending upon the sherrington's classification first is the sherrington classification which is based on the placing of the source of stimulation with whether it is antiseptors extraceptors or teleceptors teleceptors interceptors means source of stimulation they are present inside the body within the body extraceptors like mechan mechanical chemical and thermal tele means at a distance visual auditory olfactory so this classification based on where the source is present now the maybe in within the body maybe outside the body means on the surface of the body and distance depending upon type of the stimulus energy what type of the energy uh, is required to stimulate it it by mechano as the name indicate mechanical distortion thermo means temperature is required change in the temperature photo means there is a electrical photon is required a visual photon is required chemo is something related with the chemicals nausea means pain stimulating another classification which is very important is a type of the sensation we say touch receptor means receptor is stimulated by sensation means touch sensation similarly heat cold and pain another classification which is based on rate of adaptation means this is very important property of the receptor that uh, it has to be adapted now adaptation means if there is a continuous stimulation of uh stimuli then what will happen some receptors they respond very rapidly and adapt it very rapidly they will not discharge in the same frequency as before and some will continue to discharge as long as stimuli is present so there are two type of the uh, again two type of the receptors tonic receptors or phasic receptors example the tonic is the pain is a pain is a emergency you can say pain is a uh, awareness has to be conscious awareness it reaches to our conscious awareness and till there is a pain so that a person is a protective phenomena rate adapting fast facing like the pacinian carpuscles which adapt very rapid another classification means fifth classification is based on anatomical the receptor may be present superficially may be deep or in the viscera histological classification whether histologically based means encapsulated expanded or free nerve ending most of our receptors are free nerve endings but encapsulated means the fibrous tissue as circulate means mesenes passenius carpuscles expanded like the raffinis and mercus disc now these are the example of all types of the receptors these are the most of the receptors are free nerve endings these are the encapsulated expanded disc and the raffinis golgi and tendon apparatus they are present tendon muscle spindle extrafusal fibers and the crosses carpuscles that is for cold temperature now in this we will find mercus disc is a 
uncapsulated. Otherwise, all other which are present in the border of the just in the epidermis, border of the uh, epidermis, margin of the epidermis, you you will find is for the fine. This is for fine. And other is the roughness and endings for the warm uh, warm temperature, pessiness for the pressure, meanness for the touch, and the crosses and organ is for food. Process and bulb receptor which can detect the cold, you will find medullary nerve fibers, dendrite, or this. There is a branching, branched nerve. And this is the roughness, ramification of the excess connective tissue is for warm. Mechanics. So the stimuli. Threshold stimuli may cause mechanical deformation and because of the appli chemical applications can change the membrane potential. Temperature can also do this and effect of the electromagnetic radiation. Whenever there is, this is the passenger carpuscles, whenever there is a pressure stimulus, there is a deformation and here is the central part, central nerve, terminal part is also deformed. Ionic changes takes place here. But after some, as it is rapidly adjusted or rapidly or you can say phasic receptor, then you will find that this become no, there is a no ionic changes in this part. Here you will find changes, here you will see no change. So they adapted very fast. Projection that each sensory pathway originate from the receptor, no doubt, goes to the, and on its course, it ends relay or you can say relay to the cerebral cortex. So this is the pathway for that sensation. And when a sensory pathway is stimulated along its course on any point, irrespective where it is stimulated, sensation is always, always felt at the location of receptor site. When you, there is a pin prick, you will feel the pain on the surface of the, your skin. You will not feel the pain on the saber cortex. This is called law of projection. Now, this law of projection will explain phantom limb, pain to the non-existing limb. Suppose a limb is amputated, the arm is amputated, and because of irritant nerve terminals, person always feel that there is a there is a limb and there is a pain in the fingers. So if we stimulate it, even if we stimulate somesthetic area, cerebral cortex, it produces pain in the left arm. So approximately 80% of the individual with an amputation experience phantom sensation in their amputated limb. And the majority of the sensations are painful. Now we will take second, first is the specificity, second is the law of projection, third is receptor potential. Now what it is? Receptor potential, another name is generator potential, is a potential changes that occur in the receptors on adequate stimulation. So first thing which occur in the sensory pathway is the receptor potential is generated. It is a partial depolarization, the form of partial depolarization. Means there is a slow entry of the slow ionic changes. 
Now, what is the mechanism for the receptor potential? It may, it is differs in different type of the receptors. In mechanoreceptor, it is a deformation of the receptor which can open the ion channels, which can be studied, pattern the passing in carcasses, which can be stimulated easily by microglass rod. It is large in size, easily dissected. So, passing in carcasses consist of central nerve terminal, capsule of the uh, this uh, connective tissue and consists of several concentric ion like This is a terminal part of the dendrite or you can say that this is the afferent neuron. This here is the cell, canyon, afferent neuron projection means dendrite. This is the non myelinated portion. And first node of Randwell is inside this. So there is some changes in the terminal part. When it is sufficient, then receptor potential converted into action potential. And this is the site where the action potential is generated, which is within the connective tissue capsule. And from here it follows all in the law. Before that, it will not follow the all in the law. So the capsule of the concentric layers here, an unmyelinated nerve fiber, which is central part, one receptive. The receptor potential, if reached at the firing level, it converts into leads to action potential and repeated action potential generated a continuous stimulation of receptors. So firing level is required for developing the action potential and repeated potential generated only after continuous stimulation. Then it is a property is the conduction after the excitability conduction passively conducted to the first node of Ranvier in the form of electrotonic current. So what is electrotonic current? Sometimes you may ask, then you can say the passively conducted to the first node of Ranvier. It is not blocked by local anesthesia, very important. Blur. If you increase the strength by 100 times, then the rate of the discharge would be increased by this only. So what is this? Why it is so important to get a discharge? Receptor compress small changes in the stimulus intensity into a smaller change in frequency of action potential. And this is very important at compression function of the receptor. This is called compression function. So next point is adaptation. It can be of two types, tonic and phasic. If we give constant strength to stimulus, then apply to the receptor, frequency of the action potential decreases over a period of So it may be phasic receptors rapidly adapting or it may be Tonic one. Now the first there is a discharge at high rate, then it decreases rapidly, even stop. Example is tactile receptor, which is present in hair follicles, lesners, and passenger carcasses. Some mechano receptors in the joint, proteoreceptors in the joints are responsible for adapting, adapting, but it's not too much. They informs the why they rapidly change. Onset of the stimulus change, termination of the stimulus, onset as well as the termination, and what is the change in the intensity. This next step uh, adaptation is tonic receptor, continue discharge, continuous discharge of impulses. 
even at a lower rate. Rate may be decreased, but there is a continuous discharge as long as the stimulus is applied. What is the significance of that? So it maintains the sensory information and which is very important, this sensory information for vital functions. For example, arterial baroreceptors, it regulates the blood pressure, arterial blood pressure and heart rate. It is very important vital function. Muscle spindle and joint proprioceptors maintain the body posture and equilibrium. Again, is very important. Pain receptors initiate protective mechanism. So the mechanism or the adaptation can be explained in Pacinian purposes. Because it is big size and easy to dissect. Why there is a very fast adaptation here? Because redistribution of viscous component within the carpuses. Second process by accommodation which occur in the nerve fiber itself. So nerve fiber gradually accommodated to distortion pores. And once they is accommodated, there is inactivation of voltage gated sodium channel. So the significance you know very well that subserve vital functions arterial baroreceptor spindle pain Now if we see this diagram we will find the Pacinian carpuses adapt very fast within seconds then muscle spindle that is for posture and equilibrium they do not adapt they do not adapt because the platinum has opted until there is a stimulus they, they are present now in this slide in this slide I will tell you about the properties of the receptor so a smile please a smile please the letters in the smile please will tell you all properties of the receptor as for specificity that is that law is known as Muller's law of specificity I intensity or you can say if you increases the strength of the current 100 times, then there is only increase in the rate of discharge by impulses by 2 times. So the compression is here. With a smile, you can compress your anxiety. L. Law of projection. E. Excitability. You are excited to read this word that is a smile. Please is the potential, receptor potential. And label line, label line law, label line principle you will follow only after completing your receptor. That Particular sensation will be travelled by particular tract. So this is called label line projection. Thank you. The next slide subscribe for next and thanking you. Okay, bye.